Fifth bullet. Two and oh. That's zero increment. A draw? I don't care. Right, we're on. Oop, too slow, too slow. I'll watch my sensitive mouse. What's this? Long pause in a bullet match. I think I've mentioned this before. It's sickening seeing the long pause in a bullet match. It's like, how are you taking so long and finding the great moves and stuff? Why is it not moving? Oh, better not do that. Had a pawn there. So focused. Okay, bit of practice, bit of practice. <sighs> Better slow down because we'll be hitting those that just move like absolute lightning. Those guys, I don't understand how they can physically, actually physically move that quick. The screen must be so tiny. Or maybe they're playing on the phone or something, but so I'm using a mouse on a computer.
piece for a piece. In bullet, that doesn't make a difference at all, you know? Trying to gain some type of advantage having material gain don't make a difference. Oh, I've lost the bishop. He's not seeing it. I lost the bishop then. Oh, I think I can do this. Damn. Making me look good. There was loads of errors in there. I think they had quite a bit of opportunity to wipe us clean. Case in point, let's just uh, step at a time. The funky night's coming in, but I missed. So it's even not gone down with that. It's like we're saying, especially in a bullet match, the material gain doesn't really make much difference because you're not going to have that much time to make use of it. Unless, of course, you've got increment. That's it. That's it. We lost the bishop. Yeah. We lost the bishop right there. We should have been doing something like this. That's why we're going over this one because we know we made some errors. And we still left the bishop there, but it's better for us. Maybe there's some sort of fork. And we claw it back. So yeah, it was just that one then. It was just that one, leaving the bishop unprotected. These things happen in quick games. Okay, okay, let's go in. Last one. Let's hit the queen. Uh, get the knight out. Push. These are the ones I'm talking about where they just throw out the moves like crazy. You don't think they're doing anything really. Somehow they find the good moves. Which is a bit annoying. What's this? Bishop's got my quick. It's protected. It's okay. Um, rook, do something. Queen's coming off the line. Bishop's going to attack the queen. Not attack the queen. Take. Ah, sir. That'll do. No more bullet today. Okay, three to go. Just another one practicing the mid end game transition. What's this? Set play type stuff. It's that way anyway.
Da. Okay. Um, play one more on the Blitz side of things, and then we'll go into the rapid games, and then we should finish off the session. Mid to end game transition. Last one in the Blitz. Let's push here. Let's hit. Oh, slow down. Let's go there. That's all. Peak. Yeah, it's these speedy type people, you know, just throwing out the moves and you think you can't be calculating properly. Need to move the rook out of this, face the king, hit the knight, make it in the knight still, push, move the queen. Planning on moving it here. Wanted to try and get the pawn up, but I think we have to move the queen out of the way. The rook. But they are taking a long time. This is a big long pause in a 3 0 zero increment game. I don't think they're going to make another move, are they? Unless they're a super ultra ultra bullet specialist. They're not going to make a move. It's even Stevens at the moment. They're in the game still. They're in the game. Two, one, two. He's blocking it off. He can see what's happening. I'm going to take. I uh, can see what's happening. Let's take. Let's take. He's spoiling the party. Hmm. Escaping, are you?
Wish, uh, I'll do. Okay, looking at the mid to end game transition. Develop the knight. Let's push the pawn, supporting the pawn. So the opening in my head is like, well, the first four to five moves. And that it that gets the opening out there and from there you should really be able to assess how the game is going to go so we're going to take that's move four and then after after four or five you, you get a feel for are you happy with that type of position so we have gone down 20 points because our king has not been able to castle so in the eyes of purists the opponent is winning because our king is not safe but we know different but the first five moves as we said kind of dictates how the game could potentially go in my head now I'm thinking they'll be thinking they're winning so they may over egg and not really work their pieces together and think that they are genuinely winning so I'm going to bait a pawn down with a check on the king then bring the bishop back just to protect the knight got to be mindful the king is very airy looking to try and probably push this pawn here and sight the king just here after they've done the baiting. Let's just bring the bishop here. They do have a free pawn with their bishop. But like we said, the over egging, hopefully not improving their position on the ball, but they might have more material. But the idea is to transition through to the end game from the mid. So we'll turn this now as the end game in my eyes because the queens are off the board. So they have gone for the pawn. Doesn't mean they've won the game just because they have got the pawn. We have to always remember this. Let's make some space for the king and just get castled here. All simple stuff is my king safe. And my piece is starting to develop and work as a team at this moment in time. Uh, we've got two pieces out. They've got an overextended bishop. They may lose some tempo when we attack it, which is a good thing for us. So it's kind of allowing us the time to get our king to our virtual castle. The knight is attacking the pawn, so our knight can come here just defending the pawn. So we will do that. Still focused on getting the king to here. And if they don't go and castle, we bring the bishop here and stop them from castling. So the psychology of the game is because we haven't castled, they'll think they're winning. And as we said, they may over egg and just start throwing pieces out. So they are throwing pieces out, but there's nothing major. They haven't gone and castled. So it does mean we can push this here and see whether or not we are going to attempt to stop that. Only thing is though, we do go here and if the bishop did get there, you can just drop the pawn. Or you can just bring the bishop back and attack the bishop. So for now, I am just going to bring the king here to its virtual castle in position. fairly happy with the position fairly happy with happy with the opening and the transition through to the mid game now we need to focus on how can we end the game 
They've moved them night again. Probably looking to sit here, but it's Kate. Oh, no, he's not. He's going here because he's got a 2 on 1. So we can move the bishop to just protect. I don't see any problems with that. It's not doubling the pawns if the bishop takes the knight. And they've taken. Interesting. So we'll grab here. So obviously the rook is coming to put a check on the king. We can move here to attack the bishop to the other side of the board. We don't have to sit here. And they have done. So we'll just bring the king and attack the bishop. If they forget themselves. But obviously it's coming here. We've got a nice vision of coming here to go here, attacking both of these, but it might not happen. But it's a long term vision of trying to sort this bishop out. Bishops move, but we can't take because oops, excuse me, we can't take because of the X-ray that they have on the king. Oops, excuse me, just about to move it then. If we moved it here, off of the X-ray, I don't really know why they've done that move, but it's given us tempo to take it off the board. Bishop's got no protection on at the minute. They're probably going to have to come back, back, back. Gets taken either way. So the pawn is going to have to come and support. Or the bishop just takes it off, but still the knight will replicate. And it'll still be attacking the bishop. Yes, so they've done that. So still attacking the bishop. Probably the pawn comes down this, now, this time. Oh, they don't have to do that then. Okay, fair enough. Got one spot to go to. Let's just bring it down. Bishop's got space to escape now. Tucking the rook. Didn't escape the didn't escape the knight the bishop sorry okay let's attack it knight and a bishop for the rook maybe or do we just hit okay so we go here has he got a fork on us. I'm wanting to say that was a little bit arty from them because they left their bishop and they're starting to flick now so it looks like that might have been an error we kind of weathered the storm of the type of situation that was brewing I think we need to move the knight back around again yeah stopping the bishop as well okay let's bring the knight across let me take a quick look at that again take 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 yeah so we, we weren't allowed to castle but we did say they may start thinking that they're winning and maybe not using their piece maybe over egging their attacks because our king is right in the middle of the board and that is what actually happened. They overegged the knight and then they lost the bishop. So that kind of psychology, knowing some type of psychology can help you gain advantages in games. 
doesn't mean you're going to win all the time, but understanding that, well, if you've got some type of weakness in your opening, it's going to be challenged. Right, doesn't mean we've won because they're still playing on. We're up a minor piece, could get the minor piece off of the back. Is targeting here, but it's the Fisher Spassky thing. If the king comes there, mind you, we could do that, couldn't we? Takes. Takes. If it does drop, we can take. It's not supported, so that's workable. That has some substance. They're flicking like crazy now, aren't they? Look at them flick, 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 flick. They weren't flicking before they lost their bishop, and now they're flicking. mid to end game so we are really in end game mode now and the transition through to the um end game started when the queen came off basically in a nutshell and we'd established that we had a weakness already now the thing is if the bishop takes the pawn they push down onto the knight we can't come here and attack their knight so we'd be coming, oh, we could come here, couldn't we? Yeah, so I'm going to take the pawn. Obviously going to hit the knight. So if we come here, I don't really like it though, because he's going to come here, isn't he? Attack our rook, but I suppose we then pin the rook, knight to the rook. But... Yeah, so they're going for what we're saying. So we could actually come here and just go in there. But his rook is going to come down and put a check on our king, isn't it? Get a pawn off. Is there something different? What about the bishop? No, nope, going to lose the knight. Going to lose the knight. Okay, maybe go and attack their knight with the king. Where does he go? Bounces back or just takes ours and we take, he takes the pawn we come across I'm going to attack their knight I think they will continue doing that Yeah, and we're going to continue doing that. We'll take. So they're following the calculation that we said. So they've got an advanced pawn down, so then this rook will be looking to support it. And to come across. The bishop's got the diagonal at the minute. Yeah, okay, just follow the process. So that's where we took it to. Now we don't know what they're going to do. I think they're going to try and do this, but they might forget themselves when they try and do some fancy business. Or they may just start pushing pawns. But we can take. Obviously that comes to support. Bring this rook king here. Or bring the bishop down in readiness. Or just attack a rook. No, maybe not. Attack the rook. Maybe come here. And then he's not coming there. Rook comes down and attacks our king. We come down here. I think this is happening. King here, one one. Rook comes across. Protection. Get this rook in the game. Not doing any of that. It's coming protecting the pawn. So we could push here, but he then can come down with the rook here, back in the pawn. Then we can take. 
I don't think we need to lose any sleep, do we, over that? Let's push the pawn. He comes down. Backs the pawn. We say, go on then. So he goes. We take. This rook's got space to come here. Yep. Following the plan. Does it look different now that it's in place? I think we can continue. Let's attack. Oh, they've run out of time. Okay. Pretty smooth game. Playing mind games and strategical planning. Um, does work out in the end. Yeah, just because your king doesn't get castled doesn't mean you've lost the game. No. But it's really best to castle. In some shape or form, it's re it really is because it can make the game a lot easier. The opponent probably didn't take full advantage of any advantages they may have had in this game. Take a look at the um, evaluation and let's see how bad it was. Yeah, and what the opponent could have actually done because our king wasn't castled. Okay, so we've not castled now, we can't castle. And it's not showing any major dips at all, apart from that maneuver and okay so yeah they're in so it's plus two then it's dropping down nothing major it's not like a minus seven or minus eight type thing yeah that's where they've come in with the knight doing a little fancy dance which kind of loses them the bishop really yeah so that was the key point but yeah it wasn't actually a major impact just because we weren't castled so that was the initial look and now let's have a look at the second look and see what the computer suggests for them so yeah this is where we're uncastled it's not phased we're baiting a pawn and then we push this pawn trying to make space for the king but what it's saying is knight e4 but it's moving this knight. No, no. Where's knight e4? Oh, taking the damn pawn. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right there in my face. That's because I was focused on the king getting to safety. But at this moment in time, they're not fast enough to put a check on my king. So I did have time to actually go and do that move. Oh. Nice one. Okay, so yeah, trying to make space for the king. Causes me a bit of weakness. But it's only plus one. I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. That's a minor oversight. And nothing. That's plus two. So what's it saying? It doesn't like the bishop move. It is saying rook f8. So attacking the bishop straight off. Okay, I was hanging fire on that one, thinking, well, we'll win some tempo at some point. Because they've got two on one. I suppose we're attacking a higher piece. They're only attacking a pawn at the minute. All right, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I can live with that. And so then we brought the bishop in. At this point here, we're just defending. I think the rest is pretty okay. Yeah, that's fine. Nice game. Good lessons for me. Okay, let's continue the mid-end game process, practice, concept. Four nights, not too good for black. Here we go. Knight gets bounced around all over the place. So do we not need to panic about it? Each of the knights is going to get hit. What can we do about it? Anything? I don't think there's much you can do about it. Let's just go here. Let them get bounced around. You jump here, he gets bounced around here. Let's go back home. And let's go back home. Start from the beginning. All right, let's take, it's all a set play thing, but let's just go with it. Let's roll with the punches, shall we say? Yep. 
let's get the night out. Highly advanced poem. I think I missed a trick there because I should have been putting a two on one. But he can do a two on one protection. It's me. So they're looking at a way to get their pot, get their piece back, or to squish our king. So we're going to have to give a piece up. Because the queen's going to come and put a check on. I don't think I want to put my queen there, so they'll get it back. Not doing it just yet. It's looking to sink in here and get the rook. There's not much that we can do about that. We can put a check on, but the bishop just attacks. Can't take the knight because the bishop's protected by the queen and the bishop. The knight's protected by the bishop. Can't put a check on their king. So it's really quite powerful, isn't it? The knight's going to be over in the corner, he's going to get the rook. Although, really and truly, I can't move my king anyway, can I? I take, then his queen takes, then we're getting... Knight takes, I suppose. Takes, I don't think the knight will take, I think the queen will take, because they want the knight to come here. So the queen takes... Um, queen takes and we can then hit their king but if the knight takes on the king he's got a check and it's um slightly annoying but we can move here i think we're just going to take with the bishop not trying to be greedy and move here. So it's equalized. Now it's got a two on one. Yeah, so like a targeting specialist. Going to hit the bishop, protecting the pawn. Queen's got to come in at some stage. Where is it coming? Here. Because if we take the bishop, then they still got the getting the rook off the board. If we don't and we push the pawn here, we gets the knight. Quick and dirty tactics versus the end game opening. They're very ferocious. Even if we block there, he's still got the double here and gets the rook off the board. Queen is down and it's just going to be replacing and attacking here. So we can bring the queen here. It's just that it's going to have a two on one on the bishop. But we will have a check on the king. That might be a bit of a help, a bit of a tempo win, but really, where am I moving? Take. A check on. There's no 2 on 1, because I can bring it back for the 2 on 1 protection. Blocked with the knight, so I'm going to attack the knight. To try and give them something to think about. Can 
just picture the bishop coming here, x ray through to the queen, so we're not taking. But I think we'll take with the queen, go for the exchange. Alright, so we don't have an x-ray through, so we could actually take the knight. Queen can drop though, put a check on, we can bounce back backwards and forwards. Oh, hold on. So we take, take. And if he doesn't take and he just puts a check on the king. And then we drop back for a check on the king. Does the rook come here? No, because it gets taken, doesn't it? I'm going to take the knight. And they're doing that thing. So I'm going to bring the queen like we said. Well, I was assuming they were doing this, but they might think better of that now. And maybe bring the bishop here. But then we can take the queen off the board. So that's the kind of thing I was thinking. I was thinking, oh yeah, they can come here, but the king isn't trapped. It's not pinned to the queen. And I believe that is what they were thinking. Okay, so we can move here. And don't mind doubling the pawns, but we need to get our king to the other side of the board, do we? Is he still going to have rook mania? Let's go here. Rook's attacking, so we could attack their rook or make space for our bishop and try and get there. Let's do that, see if we can get the bishop here, get the king here. Let's move the king here. Comes with a check. Uh, we can bring the bishop here or we can just move the king. We'll do this. Takes a pawn. Do that. A bit angry. Let's attack the bishop. Once it's saved the bishop, attacking the pawn two on one, so the pawn's gonna hit the knight. So we'll lose that two on one exchange. Hmm. He's not there yet. So we're going to hit the bishop. No more to one one. Attack a pawn. Oh, we can't move that. Sorry. Might as well hit this rook then. They're coming for this pawn here. not wanting to exchange we can't hit there because of the bishop gone onto a dark square is attacking the pawn twice with the bishop we can support the pawn probably looking here to put a two on one but are they sacrificing the rook I'm not sure Bishop Spassky if the bishop takes 
not doing that. It's x-raying through to the rook. Rook's coming for the pawn, so he's going to go across here. Can we save it with this one? Okay, so we take, bishop takes is on our rook. Still going to be up and come and defend the knight. But then it's on pawns as well. On pawns as well. A bit too clever for me. There, tax. Can't save the pawn. Uh, maybe we don't need to lose any sleep over that. Maybe we we'll just take, keep it simple. Take, we should. Back the bishop, bishop takes the pawn, knight takes the pawn. takes the pawn do we need to give them up though I'll really? oh, take him just take just take don't want to don't need to be greedy take 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 yep takes we take with the rook then we're on more pawns no, because the knight is under threat from the rook. Alright, like we said, let's take. Takes. Knight around. Let's bring the knight around. Right, stopping the knight from jumping here. It all makes sense. Tuck the pawn with the bishop. Rook. Yep, yeah, let's attack the pawn with the bishop. Rook pins through, knights protecting. They'll just push the pawn onto a dark square. And let's attack the rook, shall we? Try and make space for the knight coming around. What is this? Oh, exchange of ma. Right, so he's got these two pawns that we have to contend with here. Let's attack this pawn. This bishop's going to get hit. Attack the bishop. Pop 
Paul. Tuck the Paul. Push. Just keep pushing. Check on. Push. Bishop's in a nice position, nice place rather. It's a king. King, King, Hmm. Well, isn't that strange? I think that's very strange. I think that's very strange that Last game in the rapid for the mid to end game transition session. And oh, let's just put in the center a little bit. Queen, bouncing the pawn, as we know the head of the snake isn't going to last too long, so I prepare my mind there right, like this area to be opened up, if they do attack it then it's no problem. Bring the bishop out, this bishop isn't going to be attacking the next castle. the pawn here but I think I'm going to move the bishop maybe not just here. let's just bring this bishop first
Back in the bishop. Let's invite him in. Not interested. Interesting. Let's get our knight off the back. In in the center. We're waiting for this one to be attacked just to get rid of it. If it doesn't, we might have to force the hand. Not yet though. Get the bishop here. They're not looking to take anything, so I'm going to bring the bishop here. See if we can realize an attack. They only have the bishop protecting them. We'll bring the knight in. We're going to get attack, so let's bring it low. Then we may be able to. Doubles the pawns in front of their king. Quite nice, isn't it? Let's take. So this pawn doesn't have any protection, so they'll rush to protect it with the king. Or the main queen here. Very strange position for them. We don't want to overreg our position because we look like we're suffocating their position. That's where it falls foul and the gaping holes start appearing. Right, so the knight is actually protecting. Good. Can hit this pawn. It's protecting. That. We go here like this, inching up, small at a time. Not really looking to expand out. And he's blocking the queen from attacking the fish. Can hit the knight. Takes the bishop. We get a check from king. I'm back protecting let's push like we were intending to do take getting very fretful this knight is going to be under attack and we're going to take the pawn what can you do block it probably block it i blocked it i will continue Smaller piece is attacking the higher, so it looks like we will be getting the check hit. Nothing else that could come in the front, can it? Ouch! I think that's a nice one to end the um the whole series on the mid end game. Oh, I've not ever moved the microphone. The microphone's all the way over there. <laughs> oh, humble apologies. <laughs> On the last beautiful game as well, and the microphones are all the way over the side of the room. So yeah, that's um, I think that's a nice one to finish the series on, the mid to end game transition.